This is Lay Ladakh. Hi there, good afternoon. This is Ley, the capital of the Union Territory of Ladakh, actually shared capital with Kargil in the western part of Ladakh. So this is my last day in Ladakh. I catch a flight tomorrow morning There you can see the incredible Lay Palace built in around 1600 and above it we'll get a better uh, view soon the uh, Lay Monastery let's see there it is the uh, monastery showed them in previous videos so uh, today I'm going to uh, try to see some other places to whatever extent that I can with a few hours here pardon my uh, voice came down with just a little bit of a uh, hello sore throat and runny nose kind of situation. I am hoping that uh, where I'm flying to tomorrow will uh, cure that. It is going to be a lot warmer. Okay, I need to try to find a ride somewhere. What is your name? Uh, my name is Sonam Angus. Sonam. Sonam, Sonam. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Gabriel. Yeah, Gab Gab Gabriel. Gabriel. Gabriel, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay.
So this is Hemeth Gompa. Gompa is a Buddhist monastery. That was quite a drive. So the last time that I was here in 2014, then I drove to Tixay Monastery, which we passed driving here. You saw it in the video. The monasteries are all in just these absolutely epic locations in the true sense of the overused word epic. But uh, look at this incredible uh, canyon. And so that road that we were going down most of the way is the road to Manali. And so that is the road that I was basically trying to come up when I was in Manali a couple of weeks ago. This would have been, you know, the end of a long journey. But uh, the whole thing is just so fascinating. These landscapes are so different, so otherworldly, really like another planet. So Hemis Monastery, situated at a distance of 45 kilometers from Leh, is the largest and wealthiest of all the monasteries in Ladakh which owns rich collection of ancient remnants like the statue of Buddha made of copper, stupas made of gold and silver. The monastery has sacred tankas, religious scroll paintings, murals, and various artifacts. Okay, so uh, let's see what we can actually see as has been the case with all of the monasteries that I have seen. They are so quiet. I'm very curious to know if it is because of the time of year or what's going on that this, you know, village seems to have nobody living in it. I've seen like one person so far. Maybe they're all just meditating. Largest monastic institution in Ladakh. Drukpa lineage of the Dragon Order of Mahayana Buddhism. Gyawa Gotsangpa Gompo. Dori came to Ladakh in the 13th century and established the Drukpa lineage. Buddha Temple. Okay. Let's see if we can actually go inside. I will need to remove the uh, shoes, I'm sure. Okay, photography not allowed. It's closed anyway, so I can probably just uh, film right inside here. So, I am assuming that this is similar to what we saw in a previous video, the Wheel of Life. And so the different sections represent different phases of life, and then you have this, whoever that is, a rope tied around naked women, like dragging them along, and then the uh, bird and the snake and the, I guess like a boar or something. So, 
this isn't just creative expression, it is all very representative, symbolic of not just life as a human being, but the realms beyond the various spiritual worlds as the Tibetan Buddhists see it. Love the uh, colors that they use. Nice to see somebody around. Okay, let's uh, go for a little walk up the hill here. Okay, is this going to go through? Looks like it. Hello. Okay, which way to go? Lots of uh, stray dogs. Or maybe they aren't exactly stray. Just fascinating, the uh, layout. To go there, like this, here, okay. Thank you. Okay, yes. Wow. And look at that view. A little uh, snow on the mountains, but there will be lots more very soon. Today is November 25th, and it is getting cold. I made the mistake of not bringing another layer when I stepped outside, and it was all nice and sunny. So, a little chilly here, but I'll survive, and I am so ready to get to the deserts of Rajasthan next flight tomorrow morning. It is going to be totally different and yet no less spectacular where I'm going next. Can't wait. Hello. Oh, that looks like a really cool hike there too up to that uh, Buddha statue. Stupas representing the path to enlightenment. Walk clockwise around them. Beautiful uh, nature here. Winter is a common. It's only going to get much colder for months and months. Okay, I see where I'm going, if I can. There's a walkway there and a stone building. Got to be some good views from up there. Julie. It's okay? I can go. Namaste. I can go walking? No? Okay.
Okay, change of plan. Let's try to do that one. So I was going to say that I thought it was possibly below freezing and look at that, a totally frozen stream. And so I wanted to mention about the uh, taxi driver and prices. So I was considering whether to go to the Tixe Monastery or Hemis. Tixe is uh, much closer to Ley. And so I walked into the uh, taxi stand area there in Ley, which is right near the uh, main market area where I started the video. And walked up to a guy sitting in his car there, asked him the prices to both Tixe and Hemis here. Tixe is much closer to Ley. And uh, he pulled out a book and started thumbing through the book and I could actually see the prices. So the taxi drivers are a lot more honest here than in many parts of the world. They're much less likely to uh, try to scam you, rip you off, all that stuff. It just seems to be kind of more consistent that uh, they're just gonna give you the straight prices. But uh, the price to Tixe was 700 something. The price to Hemis here was 1500, so it made perfect sense. It was like exactly twice as much for actually more than twice as far. Oh man, feeling that elevation. So you can see up there, great view, but it also would have been a lot of work. So the price one way dropping me here at Hemis would have been 1500 The price round trip is 2300 So like one and a half rather than twice as much. So very fair prices. And so if it's 2300 round trip, then that is like 26 bucks or so US. And now, after hiking up that, I am warming up. Okay. Little uh, Buddha statue. Sun still shining on the valley. Oh, wow. Awesome. Man, the dock is like nowhere on earth. Look at that. Oh man, what a place to live. I could imagine it in summertime. I don't know about the uh, winters. The problem is that uh, lack of heating inside. It's one thing to be cold out here. You dress up for it, you're moving around, and you can stay nice and warm. But then when there's no heating in your room, when there's no heating in the restaurants, you're sitting there waiting for your dinner and just freezing your butt off. And then you go to your cold room and hopefully you have lots of blankets and stay warm at least through the night. But uh, it is that like constant cold that is what makes it really, really challenging. There's the taxi.
Okay, I'm just going to head on back, get back in the warmer car. I think we can go down this way and uh, drive on back to Lay. And then I think that I will have him drop me at the monastery, Semo Monastery, that I visited in a previous video and showed that it was locked. I was looking online at uh, the timings and it seemed to show that it would be open from 5 to 7 in the evening. It is now maybe 4 something and so by the time we get back there then that could be perfect timing to perhaps be able to go inside. It could very well be wrong but it's worth a try and also just to uh, visit the uh, monastery one last time, do the hike down the hill back into Lay, and then that might be a good time also to find a nice restaurant and uh, get some good hot local Ladakhi food. Monastery name? Stagna. Stagna. Uh, yeah. Stagna. Yeah. This Stagna and this um, Tixe. Tixe yeah. ahead, yes. Another monastery, Gompa? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mato. Mato? Yeah. Okay. Many monasteries. I, uh, big monastery. This same deep Takna was Mato. Okay. So one more stop here at Shea Palace. I didn't visit here the last time. I think that statue must be new. That whole structure there looks newly constructed. Look at this scene. Might be too late to go inside. Let's uh, find out. So who is that? That is not a typical Buddha statue. He has a trident. Is that Shiva? Maybe not. I mean, I think it must also be Buddhist. I don't think that they would have a Shiva statue here, but I could be wrong. Wow, another just phenomenal palace. Jule. Ancient palace and shrine, Shea. Eleventh century, on the summit of Hillock, near present Castle Shea, constructed during the reign of King Daldan Namgyal in the 17th century. Well, a door is open. That's a good sign. Wow. All right.
once again. Almost nobody here. Massive stupa here. What a view. Okay, way to temple. Probably locked. They don't seem to be open very often at specific times, I guess. That must be older than uh, this by the looks of it. Okay. They have good uh, signage here. I guess this might be the kitchen. Maybe that's the uh, main kitchen for the monastery. Upper shrine. somebody's home right now. So. Let's uh see if we can get a little closer look at the uh fort here. So I came across two interesting things around the corner here. The strange thing is that they are near each other. You'll see what I mean. This appears apparently to be the restroom, outhouse, toilets, as far as I can tell. And then here is the entrance to the fort. So. If you want to go to the fort, you might end up walking by people unexpectedly because there's no, you know, door to knock or anything. Bizarre. But uh, man, this is really cool if this is actually going to be open. Seems like Kind of a small entrance for a fort. Maybe that is part of the defense of it. Whoa. Rock garden. Man. So amazing. All right. Oh, whoa, there's much more. Oh man, this is unreal. And there is Tixay Monastery. And out there, the other one, Tsamka or something like that. And then Hemis was down there and up to the right. So what is the story of this?
castle? Is it part of the same Buddhist culture that built the monasteries or before them? Because there was nothing mentioned on the signs. I've never heard anything previously about this castle. I knew about the Shea Palace, but uh, man, this thing is tricky to get to, and then there's something up on the top of that. Let's go up there. Just kidding. Let's uh, just try to do this and then get back to my taxi driver and uh, get to some hot food. I also still want to uh, stop at the main monastery above Lei, but it's going to be getting a bit late. What's the deal with this way up? That there isn't more of an established path. Perhaps something crumbled and disappeared and that's when uh, it was abandoned, earthquake. More there. This thing is old. Okay. We can get up there. Let's do it. This is a really unique castle, but I'm still just so mystified by this bizarre, barely even a proper way up. Whoa! Intense. Let's get to the top. As far as we can go, anyway. Yes. This is close enough anyway. That is the uh, upper level, it seems. I guess probably the uh, guard tower up there. Man, look at that sight. That is just such a dramatic and... Uh, Just bizarre image of 
different layers of history here sprawled across this ridge, including the uh, brand new statue being built. Okay, it is definitely time to uh, get back down the mountain here and get back to Lay. So you can hear the Muslim call to prayer down there. Here we are back at Tsemo Monastery, which I showed in a previous video. I am going to do this very quick because it is getting cold fast. I definitely do not have high hopes that uh, it is going to be open as it had said online. from 5 to 7 p.m. I'm not seeing any lights on or anything. So, that taxi driver was just the nicest guy. What he had said, I thought the round trip price from Le to the uh, Hemis Monastery and back was 2,300. He waited for me there for like 40 minutes and then we stopped at Shea Palace. I did that whole hike and then I had him drop me up here and then I asked him the price and I think he said 2,100. I thought he was going to say maybe like 3,000 or 3,500 or something. So, maybe I misunderstood or something, I don't know, but uh, I then said, what if I pay you 3,000? And he was just overjoyed by that price, which is like $34 or something for uh, quite an incredible day of exploring. Okay, up here is the uh, entrance into the uh, monastery. I think it's going to be locked. Or maybe this is the castle. It says there, Castle at Semo. Yeah. Locked door. Okay. So much for that, but uh, it was definitely another absolutely amazing day in Ladakh. Time to get somewhere warmer. So I didn't mention before, but uh, in my room, 
I have that space heater, which helps. Doesn't make the room warm, but uh, it, uh, you know, emits some heat there. And as I'm sitting on my bed, working away, then it is better than nothing. But there is something that is actually more effective, which is an electric blanket. I hadn't tried to use it the uh, first night or two, and then a couple nights ago I decided to give it a try, and it's actually kind of too hot, and so I didn't use it while sleeping. I did at one point, and then I woke up sweating and turned it off, and it wasn't really necessary anyways because I have uh, plenty of warm blankets, and so I've been staying warm while sleeping as long as I'm under the covers, but I have been using it when I get back to the room, turn that thing on, turn on the heater, and then get under the covers. The uh, electric blanket is on top of the mattress. It isn't something that goes over you. It is uh, like underneath the sheet, and so you're laying on top of it, and it gets really nice and toasty warm. And so I've been uh, going back to the room and getting a real good warm-up that way, and then get back out and get to work sitting on top of the uh, blanket there. But that helps a lot to uh, genuinely warm me up. Okay, time to do this uh, hike back down to lay just in time before it gets dark. I can see the... Uh, path just fine here. This isn't even going to take that long, 10-15 minutes. So let's go find a good restaurant, maybe have some more tukpa, Tibetan noodle soup. Back in town. I started the video right over there. So... I need to find a restaurant that is serving Tukpa. Surprisingly, there aren't many restaurants in the main square here. It's kind of odd. Lots and lots of shops. Let's see how long it takes to uh, find a restaurant. Food at Paradise, okay. Well, that sounds good. Kashmiri Chinese Tandoor Indian. And it is enclosed. Hopefully a little warmer than outside. All right, let's go for it. Hello. I'm good. Is this the way to this restaurant, Food Paradise? Food Paradise. Upstairs. Okay. Do you know which is better for Tukpa? This one or? No, 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 no because it's a, a kama is a close. It's closed, I see. Yeah, that's a close. And so go for this uh, up. Okay. Food paradise. Great. It's a very good, very nice. Tasty. Good, good to hear. Thank so you. you will come to my shop. I will see. I'm not doing any more shopping now, so. So I have a, like these caps also, I have like this caps, like this. Oh, like the really warm ones, huh? Tomorrow I'm going to Rajasthan. I'm going to the desert, so it will be it will be warm. <laughs> Thank you. If you want a mobile, also I have scarves. Also, if you want to give to someone else. Okay, okay. Good to know. I just revealed where I'm going in Rajasthan, but I didn't want to, so I edited that out. But I am going to Rajasthan, and I'm. Really looking forward to it. It's going to be amazing. 
So unfortunately, this isn't a Ladakhi restaurant at all. They have like Chinese, Punjabi, typical Indian food. But I didn't feel like leaving and going and trying to find something else at this point. So I ordered some uh, good looking chicken and a paneer cheese dish and a ginger lemon honey. So uh, if you're wondering if it is warmer inside here than it is outside, I'm looking forward to the holidays. A little bit, just a little bit. There clearly is not uh, heating in here, so that is just something you have to expect if you're going to come here at this time of year when it's cold out. It's, it's going to be cold just about everywhere. Looking forward to getting uh, under my blankets, getting a good warm-up when I get back to my room. And look what he brought me. He just came over and said, would you like a heater? So that is bringing me back to life. Oh, it feels so good. Heat, bring on the heat. And got a ginger lemon honey here, no tea in it. Oh yeah, that is gonna help too.